Welcome to this first of a series of videos showing you how to learn to program your computer using the processing programming language. We'll be using processing for two main reasons. First, it allows you to do visually interesting things relatively easily. And second, it's free and open source, which means you can go to processing.org with the link below, download and install processing for free on your computer and start using it to program whatever you like. I'll put a link, another link to a video showing you how to download and install processing on your computer. This video here starts with you having the program already installed on your computer. You start it up and it looks a bit like this. So what I'm going to do now is show you around this window and what the key parts are. Not the in-depth version, just enough to get you going so you can start to write your first programs. Uh, a quick note about this and future videos in the series, I will go quite quickly. Uh, the intention is that you can pause and rewind as much as you like, but we shouldn't make the videos too long for you. So looking at the window you have in front of you, the first thing you'll notice up on the title bar, you have two sections of text here. The first is the file name, so when you first open up the program or start a new um, window, you'll get given a default file name. Sketch is the word that processing uses for its programs, and then you get a string of numbers based on the date that you start the program. You'll then also get shown the version of processing, so in this case we're using 3.0.2, uh, by the time you watch this video, you may well find there's a later version out, but that's the current version for now. Moving down, we have the play button. So when you write your code, you run your code by pushing the play button. And then over here, we have the stop button, and you push that one to stop your program running. Moving across here, we have a couple of buttons that we won't be using at first. First is the debug window, so when your program is behaving a bit strangely, you can open this one and start to have a closer look at what your program is doing. We then have the modes drop down. At the moment we only have one mode installed, but you can install other modes if you want to do other um, targets for your programming. So if you want to program for Android or Arduino or embedded web-based work using JavaScript, you can do that through here. Moving a little further down, we have the tab bar. So at the moment there is only one tab with the file name or the program name on it. Once you start to program additional, uh, more complex programs, you may decide to use additional tabs. You do that with the drop down here. Then we get to the main event, which is where you write your code. So this big white space here is where you type in your code. The, your code will be um, allocated line numbers. You can see them listed down here. That's particularly useful when you're trying to debug your code. The error messages will refer to a line number, and those line numbers are these numbers here. So we can start to type in our code. So for example, I can type in this is not code. So that's obviously not proper processing code, and I've created errors. So this bar down here that was gray is now thrown up its hands, gone red, and has an indication of what the error is. Sometimes, depending on the card time on the kind of error, you'll also get some suggestions as to what you might want to do about that error. Moving a little further down, what we have is this black region here, which is the console window. You can make your program write text to this area, and our first program will actually do that. We can switch over this region from being the console to being the errors list, and there we go, we have the list of errors, so obviously a couple of errors I've typed in that first line. It's listed the errors, given us a quick uh, description of what the error is, and then also where it is, so our only tab, but if we had additional tabs it would tell us which tab we were in, and what line number, so you can see here line number one, corresponds to the one up here on the left. And if I delete that code, you can see the errors go away. So that the error list is updated dynamically as you type. So when you're halfway through writing code, sometimes it'll throw up errors just because you haven't finished typing in your program. And that's basically it. That's the, the basics you need to know of using the development environment for processing. It's called an integrated development environment, IDE, or sometimes a processing development environment, or the PDE. I'll put another link below which will take you through to the processing web page where there's a, a much more detailed description of the aspects and elements on this window. But for now, follow the link that's coming on the screen now and go write your first program in processing. Thanks for watching.